and thank you for watching. This tutorial will focus on understanding Alzheimer's disease as an emerging public health issue. Today we'll examine what public health is, how it works, and why Alzheimer's is, in fact, a public health issue. We will also examine tools and techniques that public health can use to address Alzheimer's. So what exactly is public health? Public health promotes and protects the health of people and communities across the entire population. While healthcare delivers medical care to individuals, public health works to prevent groups of people from getting sick or injured in the first place. And public health goes even further than prevention. By encouraging healthy behaviors, public health promotes overall wellness and well-being. Public health is all around us, in our schools, in our workplace, in the grocery store and hospitals, in the air we breathe and the water we drink. By working across a wide variety of settings among diverse populations, public health expands the reach of health and health care to many people. Among many things, public health works to protect drinking water and clean air, prevent and slow disease outbreaks, reduce injuries and illness, encourage healthy behaviors, and improve the management of chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease. To minimize health problems, we can take both an individual approach and a community or public health approach. Let's take smoking, for example. A person can work with a counselor to reduce her smoking to improve her individual health, while public health can change the environment to reach more people and affect an entire community, in this case banning smoking from indoor public areas like restaurants and shopping centers and running quit smoking campaigns. Let's look at high blood pressure as another example. A person can be treated for his high blood pressure by a physician, individual health care, while public health can address this on a community level, in this case by recommending that all adults are screened for high blood pressure during regular medical checkups. By changing environments and working on a community level, public health can reach a large number of people and change the health and well-being of entire communities for the better. Now that we know what public health is, how does it work? First, health problems become public health issues when the burden is large, the impact is major, and there are ways to intervene. Numerous tools and techniques are available to develop a better understanding of health issues, respond on a population level, and create meaningful change for those affected. Some of these tools and techniques are conducting surveillance, or collecting data, protecting health from injuries and illness, and promoting early detection and diagnosis. Now let's take a look at these in the context of Alzheimer's. Historically, Alzheimer's disease has been viewed primarily as an aging issue. But recently, Dr. David Satcher, former U.S. Surgeon General and Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, wrote that Alzheimer's is the most under-recognized threat to public health in the 21st century. Increasingly, more and more people are beginning to agree with Dr. Satcher that Alzheimer's is a public health crisis. For example, Alzheimer's and dementia were included in Healthy People 2020, the nation's health promotion and prevention blueprint, and the CDC has published a public health roadmap for addressing cognitive health and Alzheimer's disease. So what specifically makes Alzheimer's a public health issue? It goes back to how we define public health issues. First, the burden of Alzheimer's is large. Today, more than 5 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's, and the annual cost of caring for them exceeds a quarter of a trillion dollars. This burden is projected to grow. By 2050, as many as 16 million could be living with the disease, with costs exceeding $1.1 trillion. Second, the impact of Alzheimer's is major. For example, more than one quarter of all hospitalizations of people with dementia are preventable at a cost to Medicare of nearly $2.6 billion in 2013. Also, Alzheimer's affects more than just the individual with the disease. Over 15 million family and friends provide over 18 billion hours of unpaid care annually. And because of the physical and emotional toll of caring for someone with Alzheimer's, these caregivers have an estimated $10 billion in additional health care costs each year. Finally, Alzheimer's has a significant impact on federal and state budgets. Of the $259 billion spent on the health and long-term costs of caring for those with Alzheimer's, more than two-thirds are paid by state and federal governments through Medicare and Medicaid. 
Third, there are ways to intervene using some of the common public health tools and techniques mentioned earlier. Even without a way to prevent, cure, or slow the progression of Alzheimer's, the public health approach can be used to improve the well-being and quality of life for those living with Alzheimer's and to reduce the costs associated with it. Now let's examine some of those tools and techniques public health can use to address Alzheimer's. The place to start is with surveillance, or data collection, an essential public health tool that shows the impact and burden of diseases, provides the ability to track and monitor trends, and informs interventions. Using the existing State Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System survey, better known as BRFSS, states collect data on the impact of cognitive decline and caregiving for Alzheimer's. Two modules are available, the Cognitive Module and the Caregiver Module. The Cognitive Module asks about increased confusion or memory loss, known as subjective cognitive decline, the potential difficulties it may cause with everyday activities, and whether individuals have discussed their memory problems with a healthcare professional. The Caregiver Module asks questions about a care recipient's health problems and greatest care needs, as well as the services that caregivers need. Including these modules in a state's BRFSS survey provides the research, caregiving, and public health communities with state-specific data on cognitive decline and caregiving, identifies opportunities for public health to intervene, helps stakeholders track progress in the public health response, and enables state and federal policymakers to make informed decisions when developing plans and policies. A second technique of public health intervention is health protection. These strategies help reduce the onset of disease, reduce injuries, and reduce other health problems. While there is currently no way to prevent Alzheimer's, a growing scientific consensus has concluded that healthy living, including regular physical activity and attention to heart health, as well as avoiding traumatic brain injuries, benefit the brain by reducing the risk of cognitive decline. This provides public health officials with the opportunity to integrate brain health messages into their campaigns on healthy living practices, such as smoking cessation or diabetes management. As many as half of those living with Alzheimer's or another dementia have not been diagnosed. This makes a third technique of public health, promoting and assuring early detection of disease and disability, vitally important. Early detection and diagnosis are the best ways to provide better medical care and enhance outcomes and offer the best opportunities for early intervention and maintenance of independent living. They also support better management of multiple chronic conditions and avoidance of injuries, such as falls. In addition, early detection and diagnosis enable affected individuals to plan for their future and access community-based services, both of which can reduce the use of more costly healthcare services and lessen the burden of caregiving on their families. And public health can play an important role in efforts to educate the public and medical community about the warning signs of possible dementia and the benefits of early diagnosis. Let's review. Public health works across an entire population to promote and protect the health of people and communities where they live and work. Alzheimer's is a public health issue because its burden is large, its impact is major, and there are ways to intervene. Public health can intervene and address Alzheimer's from a population perspective by using traditional public health tools and techniques such as collecting data, protecting and promoting brain health, and promoting early detection and diagnosis. Addressing Alzheimer's disease with a public health approach allows us to create population-level change, achieve a higher quality of life for those with the disease and their caregivers, and reduce associated costs. Thank you for watching. For more information on Alzheimer's disease as a public health issue, visit alz.org slash public health. For information on Alzheimer's disease and other Alzheimer's policy priorities, please call 1-800-272-3900 or visit alz.org.